Okay, guys, in this lesson, we're going to talk about sequences and specifically arithmetic sequences. A sequence is a list of numbers that has a pattern. And here we have two different ex examples. So in our first sequence, our first term, which we denote a sub one is three. And then our second term, which we denote as a sub two is eight and then 13, the fourth term is 18, and the fifth term is 23, and so on. So the pattern to get from three to eight, to 13, to 18, to 23, is we are adding five. Three plus five is eight. Eight plus five is 13. 13 plus 5 is 18, 18 plus 5 is 23, and so on. When you have a sequence and the pattern is adding or subtracting at the same rate, then we say it's arithmetic. So this is an arithmetic sequence, and it is a type of linear function because of the constant rate of change. We could find our sixth term by adding 5 and it would be 28 and so on. Let's take a look at this sequence. 3 to 6 to 12 to 24 to 48. In this one, you can see the pattern that we are doubling each term. So we are multiplying by 2 to get to that next term. When we multiply by a constant rate to get from term to term, this is called a geometric function or sequence, excuse me. And we will learn it's a type of exponential function. But for now, we're going to focus on our arithmetic sequences, which is a type of linear function because of this common difference of 5. So the common difference is what we call the slope or the constant rate of change of arithmetic sequences. And instead of m for slope, we're going to use the variable d. So common difference, we're going to use a d, and that is the value that we are increasing or decreasing to get from term to term of an arithmetic sequence. Now let's talk about the different parts of a sequence. Here again, we have the same example. We know that the common difference is 5. 3 plus 5, 8 plus 5, 13 plus 5, and so on. So let's talk about the domain of the sequence. And the domain of any sequence is always going to be the same. So 3 is our first term. So 3 is our first position. The second term is 8. The third term is 13. The fourth term in this sequence is 18, and the fifth term is 23. So we use the variable n for our input values, and we use the notation a sub n for our output. So our input or domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. We cannot use interval notation. We have to use a roster or a listing and list out the elements. So with the domain of any sequence, one is going to be the first element of our domain because there is a first number, there is a second term number, there is a third term in our sequence, a fourth term, a fifth term, and so on. So the domain is always our counting numbers, one, two, three, 
four, five. And again, we use N to notate the domain instead of X to denote the range or the output instead of f of x or y, we use a sub n. That is your range. The range are the terms of the sequence. The first range element is 3, 8, 13, 23, and so on. Sometimes I am asked how many elements do you need you need to list as many in which someone can see the pattern. So I can see the pattern after about five. So three, four, five elements is sufficient. Now, here is our notation. A sub one, instead of f of x or y, we say a sub one, our first term is three. So that would be an ordered pair one, comma three. So on our graph, we would graph this sequence at one comma three. Our second term is eight. A sub two equals eight. That would be the point two comma eight. Two comma eight. Our third term in our sequence, A sub three equals 13. That is ordered pair 3, 13, and we can graph this on our graph. So 3, 13. And we can see this is creating a linear function. It is a line because we are we have a constant rate for each time we go for each term, we go up five, up five. Our fourth term is 18. We would write this as 4, 18, and we can graph this. Our fifth term is 23. This would be 5, 23. And our sixth term, we would add 5 to get 28. And so that would be 6, 28, and that would be off of our graph. Notice that these points are not connected because arithmetic sequences and all sequences are discrete. They are a scatter plot. So the first term is three, the second term is eight, and so on. There are no term positions in, in between. There are no terms in between the three and the eight or the eight and the 13. So we will not connect these to, to make a continuous graph. It is discrete. Our function table, instead of x and y, or x and f of x, our input values are always the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. And then we list those actual terms, 3, 8, 13, 18, and 23. Now let's talk about two different ways, two, two different forms that we can write our sequence outside of listing out the elements. The first form is called recursive. Recursive form is just a definition of the sequence. A sub n, my output, my term value equals A sub n minus 1, and this is always written like this, the n minus 1 just means the previous term. You will not plug anything in here. This just represents the previous term plus your common difference will give you the current term. So we are simply going to input the common difference, which is 5. So this is simply a fill in the blank. The recursive form just defines how we are getting from term to term. So if we wanted to know the 80th term, the recursive form is not very user friendly. I simply would just have to know the last previous term, which was 23, and add 5, add 5, add 5 until I got to the 80th term of my sequence. So again, recursive simply defines 
the function by knowing the previous term. So here is a sequence. It starts at six. A sub one is six. And my common difference is four. So I could write the recursive form. The previous term, whatever it is, plus four. They want us to find the 20th term but we're not going to use the recursive form because we would simply have to start with six, add four, add four, add four, and so on. So we are going to learn the explicit form to identify this 20th term. So my first term was six. My second term would be 10. My third term is 14 because we're just adding four each time. And we're going to stop there. Now let's talk about the explicit form. Explicit sim simply means clear. So the explicit form gives us a clear user-friendly formula so we can indeed determine that 20th term. So this goes back to our first example, example number one. Our common difference is plus five. And our first term, a sub one, is three. So our explicit formula, you tell the reader where to start the first term plus your common difference. And then n minus one is simply part of explicit formula. So we are filling in our a sub 1 value that goes here. That's the first term of your sequence plus, and then we have our common difference. So let's write this. This is a sub 1, and this value is our common difference, and then it's always times n minus 1. So this is the explicit form for this sequence. Now, to put it in a form that looks like slope-intercept form, we're going to simplify by distributing the 5. 5 times n and 5 times minus 1. And now we're going to combine our like terms. And you can see this is our common difference, what we Note is slope when we're talking about linear functions. And then we have minus two. Now, this is so the so-called y-intercept, but recall, a sequence does not actually have a data point on the y-axis because there's no such thing as a zeroth term. Every sequence starts with the first term, the second term, the third. So there is no y-intercept when we are talking about a sequence. Now it's asking us to find a sub 20. So this means we are going to plug in 20 for our position value. So 5 times the 20th term minus 2. Well, let's write this a sub 20 equals 5 times 20, that's 100, and 100 minus 2 is 98. So our 20th term is 98. So on the scatter plot, we could graph that at 20, 98. So if it asks us to list the first five terms of a sequence and they give us the simplified explicit form as we see here, Remember, your n value is the location, or you can think of it as the position of your sequence, and the a sub n is the actual term number. So to get the term we're looking for, we are going to input the location or position value. 
So to get the 20th term for this sequence, we are going to plug in 20 and 3 times 20 is 60 and 60 plus 12 is 72. So our 20th term in our sequence is the term 72. To get the first five terms, our first term, we plug in 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 12 is 15. We plug in 2 to get the second term. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 12 is 18. We can plug in a 3 to get the third term. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 12 is 21. Some people can see the pattern of plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. That is the common difference. So you can either plug in 4 and work it out. 3 times 4 is 12 plus 12 is 24. Or we can use our common difference and add 3 to the previous to get the current. And our sixth term in our sequence is going to be the previous term of 27 plus 3 to get 30. So just remember that the N is like your X, that's the input. And our input values, our domain, are always 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So you plug in a position that you want to find to get out that term value.